Praise the Lord, beloved. Praise God. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for you on today. Amen. This is Cornerstone Deliverance Church. This is our 12 p.m. Sunday school. Praise God. We welcome you, amen, to the Sunday school session. Our address is 830 Pepperidge Road in Westbury, New York, 11590. And our website is www.cornerstonedeliveransechurch.com, beloved. And we invite you to peruse the website, amen. We believe that those things that the Holy Spirit had released via the website will truly, truly be a blessing unto you, praise God. Beloved, now we're going to have our very own Sister Latasha commit the Bible, commit the Sunday school unto God in prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father thank God, you, we want to thank you Latasha. today, O oh God. We, I bless everyone on the line today. Father God, Hallelujah. we thank you today for another day. We thank you for another opportunity that you woke us up this morning. Dear God, Father God, I just ask you today, oh God, to bless and touch everyone on the line today, oh God. Father God, because we know that there's someone that might have couldn't even call out or call in today, oh God. So, Father God, we look to you on today for all that you have for us, oh God. Lord God, we come to you with our undivided attention on today, oh God. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for everything that you're doing, for your protection, your love, and your mercy on today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Praise God. And so we thank God for Sister Latasha committing the Sunday school lesson unto God in prayer. Beloved, our lesson title today is David's Grief for Saul and Jonathan. Again, it is David's Grief for Saul and Solomon. The lesson text is coming forth from 2 Samuel um, chapter 1, verses 11 through 12, and verses 17 through 27 for those of you that don't have the book. Amen. That's Second Samuel chapter one, verses eleven through twelve. Those are the first verse, two verses we're going to read, and then we're going to go to um, verses seventeen through twenty-seven. Amen. And I am going to begin to read the text, and the text reads as this: Then David took hold on his clothes and rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until even for Saul and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of the Lord, and for the house of Israel, because they were falling by the sword. Verse 17 says, And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. Also, he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. The beauty of Israel is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Verse 20 says, Tell it now in Gath, publish it now in the streets of Ascalon, lest the the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Verse 21, ye mountains of Geboa, let there be no dew, neither let there be no rain upon you, nor fields of offering, for there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away. The shield of Saul as though he had not been anointed with oil. Verse 22, from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives. And in their death, they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. 
Verse 24 says, Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet with other delights, who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel. Verse 25, How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? O Jonathan, thou wast slain in thine high places. Verse 26, I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of woman. Verse 27, how are the mighty fallen and the weapons of war perished? Amen. And the golden text today is coming from 2 Samuel um, verse chapter 1, verse 19, and it says, The beauty of Israel is slain upon the high places. How are the mighty fallen? Amen? Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read this quick introduction to you. Amen? From the lesson, lesson text, it says, Life is filled with both joy and sorrow. While some people seem to have more or less joy or sorrow than others, is one of the enigmas of the human condition. Obviously, sin, either directly or indirectly, is at the root of many of the sorrows we experience. While some sorrow can be traced to bad choices, on our part, others cannot. The book of Job demonstrates that even the righteous may suffer greatly. Job tragically lost his children his health, and his wealth. Even so, he would not curse God and die. That's Job 29. As his wife suggested, since sorrow is the common lot of human beings, how we usually work through grief is fairly predictable. Those who have experienced deep sorrow will probably recognize the five stages of grief. Those five stages of grief are denial, their anger, their bargaining, their depression, and acceptance. While people in the biblical world did not enjoy the technological advances and modern conveniences we take for granted, they dealt with sickness, sorrow, and death in much the same way we do. In short, Things have not changed in thousands of years. Amen. And so I just wanted to read that to you for the text today. is coming from 2 Samuel chapter 1, verses 11 through 12 and 17 through 27. And in this text we are seeing here that King Saul, who had disobeyed God, amen, was disobedient to God's word to Saul, Amen. And disobedience, we know, to the word of God to be a sin. Amen. Hallelujah. And it um, caused for Saul to lose the anointing, amen, that was given unto him. And it was given to another, which was David. Amen. And we learned in the lesson before how Saul tried to kill David, many attempts on David's life. He sent his army after David. He tried to kill David himself, amen, but God was with David. And so last week's lesson, lesson was on um, jealousy, but this week's lesson, amen, is we are, we are speaking about how should we respond when our enemy is slain, amen, hallelujah. And I believe that David is a great example of that, King Saul being David's spiritual father, amen, David was his armor bearer at one time, the captain of his host, amen. David played, amen, um, his instrument just so that the demonic spirits that, that um, hallelujah, oppressed King Saul would flee from him, that he would have a peace of mind, amen. But King Saul dealt treacherously with David. He was jealous, amen, of the anointing on David's life and the favor that David had with the people of God, amen, and King Saul, amen, tried to kill David many times. But now we're in the text and we're seeing how King Saul, the enemy of David, amen, hallelujah, has been slain in battle. And so 
have his son Jonathan that is a dear um, friend of David. And instead of David, amen, hallelujah, flaunting or being happy about King Saul's death, he rent his clothes and he began to mourn, amen. And all that amen. is with David, amen, mourned along amen. with him, praise God. Listen, when your leader is in mourning, amen, there's no way you can be rejoicing. Amen. I remember speaking Amen. to Prophet Jesus Williams. Amen. And she was saying unto me, it was her birthday, and, you know, we wanted to do something to celebrate her birthday. And she said, don't celebrate my birthday this year. I am in mourning. She was in mourning, and she was in grief for the pain that the people in the world are dealing with in this season, the battles that they are facing and need to overcome. Amen. Amen. And so the Bible teaches us, amen, that when death enter into, amen, our windows and our doors, not just of those of us that are known to be commonplace people, but of the kings and queens. Listen, death is no respect of a person. Death, when death is on assignment, death will come to get you. Amen. Hallelujah. And so he taught us, amen, through the word of God to call for the wailing woman. Amen. Let them lament. Let them well. Let them cry out. Amen. For through them crying out, through their lamentations, God will hear their cry. God will deal with the spirit of death. Praise God. Hallelujah. And so I understood that for where we were with all, in this season of our life, with COVID-19, all the deaths that are taking place, amen, people, amen, some people that are not working, amen, not knowing, amen, hallelujah, how your family is going to be cared for, how your children are going to be taught in school, being concerned about your children or your family members contracting, amen, this um, this virus, amen, hallelujah, and I tell you, it is so serious that she said that she is not celebrating, amen, when she knows that her place is to lament, when she knows that her place is to cry out to God, when she knows that her place is to tear her clothes and put on sackcloth and ashes, amen, hallelujah, Jesus, beloved, we have to begin to be able to discern the signs of the time, amen. You yourself may not be in mourning, but it's impossible for the whole body of Christ to be in mourning or for your sister to be in mourning or your brother to be in mourning and for you not to bear that burden, amen. amen. And so, amen, the first part of the lesson that we're going to look at is mourning the house of Saul, amen. Saul was the king, amen, at this time. And so the first part is mourning the house of Saul. The second half is lamentations for the falling, amen. And when David lamented and his people lamented, they did not just lament for the house of Saul, amen. They cried out unto God for the whole nation of Israel, amen. Deep sorrow was expressed, hallelujah, amen, beloved. And listen, we cannot bypass, amen, grief, amen. We have to know how to deal with grief, amen. I want us to also look at today's aim, amen. I want you to see the facts, the principle, and the application, amen. The facts are today, this is what we want to pay attention to, to learn that God calls us to love our enemies and learn not to rejoice when bad things happen to them, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. We are not to rejoice when bad things are happening to other people, amen? amen? But God raised the bar. He said, do not rejoice when bad things are happening to those that did evil against you, amen? And the principle amen. is to recognize, amen, hallelujah, God is speaking and he has given us instruction, amen, hallelujah. Amen. And the principle is to recognize that the only way to truly love our enemies is to see them as Christ sees them. Amen. And so Amen. we have to begin to look at things through the eyes of God. If we were to go to, amen, hallelujah, Isaiah chapter 11, amen, it speaks of the seven eyes of God or the seven spirits of God. Amen. It speaks of, hallelujah, how there was a a root that came forth from Jesse, amen, and that root being Jesus and Jesse being the father of David, being that Jesus came through that kingly line, amen, and that these were 
were rested upon him that made him who he was. Amen. And so if we come in the name of Jesus, we ought to come in the seven spirits that rested upon Jesus, the seven spirits of God. Amen. Hallelujah, my God, that led Jesus, that empowered Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what our operation has to be in, beloved. And this is going to be the only way that you can look upon the affliction of your enemy, one that did not do you right or treat you right. Amen. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And not Ooh. hallelujah want to rejoice at their calamity. God is raising Ooh. the bar. He's holding the church to a higher standard. Praise God. Amen. And so, beloved, we want to be mindful. Amen. And those seven spirits is the spirit of the Lord. It's the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of knowledge and understanding, the spirit of might, the spirit of the fear of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus, it is the spirit of counsel. Amen. So whatever it is that we need, we need not to see it through our own eyes. We need not to see our enemy through our own eyes. Amen. Hallelujah. Because we can miss things, amen. We can miss signs that God is trying to show us, amen. We need revelation. We need instruction. We need supernatural divine impartation, amen. We need God to lead us. We need his word to be a lamp to our feet and a light unto our pathway, amen. And, beloved, after we identify the facts and the principles in this lesson, amen, then we have to begin to walk it out. And that's the application, being able to live what we have heard or what it is that we say that we believe, amen. And application is being able to apply these principles in hard times, amen, hallelujah. Amen. In real life, amen. And so the application is, to ask the Lord to help us see our enemies through his eyes and to be able to love them as he does. Praise God. Amen. And so we're saying how can God love our enemies? Well, God loves the world. Amen. He loves his begotten son unto the world that the world would not perish, but that the world may have everlasting life. Amen. And so when I think on loving your enemy, amen, we were once the enemy to God. Amen. We once, amen, was enmity with him. Amen, my God. But he sent down his son, wrapped his word in flesh. Emmanuel, God with us, the incarnate Christ. For what? For the very purpose to die our death pay our sin debt, that we can be reconciled back to God, redeemed, amen, hallelujah, amen, we, we were redeemed from the curse, amen, my God, we was, we was plucked up and transplanted out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light, amen, and God loved us so much even at a time when we was enemy to him, hallelujah, even at a time when we were separated, Amen. From him. He loved us. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, beloved, amen, we have to grow in this thing. Those of us that do not to be the children of God, we have to grow. Amen. We have to put on the mind of Christ, and then we have to know how to operate. Amen. In the, uh, hallelujah, exousia, authority, and the dunamis power, amen, that God has given unto us. Amen. And so we're going to look at the part of the text that speaks of the morning, morning the house of Saul, amen. And it says, then David took hold of his clothes and rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him, and they mourned and wept and fasted until even for Saul and for Jonathan his son and for all the people of the Lord, for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. Amen. And so here David was grieving. Amen. Hallelujah. He was grieving for the very one. Amen. Hallelujah. Like I said prior, that tried to take his life. Amen. You see, King Saul, hallelujah, he had strayed further and further from the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. And beloved, hallelujah, sometimes, amen, we could get a little far, but God is the one that he'll draw you back in. Come back in, get a little close, amen, shut everything down, get in my presence, let me instruct you, don't get too far off, amen, we have to be careful, amen, hallelujah, first thing he did 
was he he did he made a sacrifice unto the Lord when he knew that he was not of the Levitical tribe or was not a priest to make a sacrifice. Amen. That was disobedience. The second thing that he did, amen, what he did was he went and he invoked. Amen. A witch of Endor. Amen. My God, my God. Listen, he went to to hear from a witch. One of the witches, amen, that that there was a time in Saul's um kingship, amen, when he put all the witches out. He said anyone that is known to practice any type of witchcraft or sorcery would be put to death. Amen. This witch of Endor knew that. Amen. But when Saul was not hearing from God, not by Urim, not through prayer, not through a prophet. When Saul was not hearing from God, instead of waiting, amen, hallelujah, Saul went to hear from a witch, amen. Saul went, and some people are doing this today. They're going to these tarot card readers, tea leaf readers. You're going to the horoscope, say, amen, hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. These things are sorcery and witchcraft, amen. And the information amen. that you are getting, you are getting it from Come the in. demonic spirit. I see all the time, even with the church people posting on their pages, amen, things about the, the, the um, hallelujah, um, excuse me one minute, things about, amen, the signs, amen, Taurus this and, and Virgo that and, and all of this foolishness, amen, even allowing for Facebook to make predictions for you. You got to be careful with these things, amen. This is amen. modern witchcraft, amen, by way of technology, praise God. Hallelujah. Listen, the enemy is going to get you one way or another if you are not careful, amen, if you don't submit and surrender unto God, amen. And so King Saul went. Amen. To hear from this witch. Amen. Hallelujah. The witch of Endor. He went to inquire of her because he could not hear from God. Amen. And he wanted her to summon up. Amen. Samuel the prophet. Amen. And Samuel had already transitioned. Amen. And Samuel, when he came up, he was angry. Amen. And he said, what have you done? Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some of us, amen, are operating in the chromacy. Amen. We are talking to the dead, summoning the dead. This is not of God. Amen. Anything with a with a um Christy at the end of it, that stuff is demonic. Amen. Praise God. And so you have to be careful. Some of us are still going to the grave and talking to mommy and talking to daddy, amen, holding conversations, getting numbers from the dead and all kind of stuff, amen. Mm. I'm here to tell you today, amen, that you are on thin ice. That is witchcraft, praise God, amen. And then the, the, the answer that Saul got was not an answer that he wanted. The answer that he got is that Israel would be defeated in battle and Saul and his sons would die, amen, that day, amen. And the king who had been chosen by God and had begun will, well came to a humiliating end. If ever there was a tragic figure in Scripture, it was Saul, amen. And so you find that Saul was his own worst enemy, praise God, amen. And for those of us thus today, we need to realize, amen, it is in the choices that we are making, amen. We can find at times that we are our own worst enemy. Why? Because we do not tap into the spirit of counsel. We are not seeing things through the eyes of God, amen. Hallelujah. One of the things that I know is that I have come today and to the presence of the Lord, together with the saints, amen, not because I had to, but because this is where I want to be. I've made a choice to obey God, amen, and to feed his people. I make a choice, amen, to get in the presence of God, to get a word from God that would empower and direct and instruct his people, praise God, amen. And so, beloved, these are the things that we have to be mindful of, amen. We need to be able to see things through the eyes of God. And, and King Saul at this time was not seeing things through the eyes of God. He was seeing things, amen, through the eyes of a witch. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus, beloved. You must know the difference. Amen. So in spite of the fact that King Saul considered David his enemy, David never, nevertheless mourned for him. After all, Saul was the Lord's anointed, amen? And what that means is that he was still appointed king by God, amen? The oil of God was smeared on him, even though God 
took his anointing back and anointed another because he was still in that position. Amen. That was how much David honored God. Amen. You will find today that people will disrespect the very anointed of God. Hallelujah. I'm not talking about in their death. Amen. I'm talking about in their living. Praise God. Come up against threaten, amen, do all kind of things, amen, speak evil of them, amen, praise God, beloved, touch not my anointed, says the word of God, and do my prophet no harm, amen, David had a heart after God's heart, David's affection towards Saul, amen, was not just um, David's personal um, might, amen, hallelujah, David had to pass that, David was operating supernaturally and divinely, Beloved, amen, hallelujah, and this is one of the things that God has given us for the month of August, amen, to be able to go beyond human limitations when it comes to love, to be able to go beyond human limitations and boundaries, even when it comes down to forgiveness, even when it comes down to entering into grief, amen, hallelujah, in, in Saul's death, David did not look on the bad, he did not rehearse the bad, amen, but he began to speak good about him that was once anointed by God, him that was in the place of king, and hallelujah, and hallelujah, and was over the Lord's army, amen, hallelujah, can we begin to see things with the eyes of God, or do we get in our flesh and get all upset about they did this to me, and they did that to me, and they're this, and they're that, and, and then you begin to send word curses, God is going to get you, or I'm coming to get you, amen, beloved, you got to be careful, amen, hallelujah, because God fights his people battles, amen, hallelujah, and you too may consider yourself, amen, hallelujah, the people of God, amen, hallelujah, but just as God is going to protect you, so will he protect those that you rise up against, amen, hallelujah, that is also the people of God. I remember there was a time when Judah amen, was going to fight Israel, amen. That was a time when there was a separation. There was a northern tribe and the southern tribe, amen. And the northern tribe was the ten tribes of Israel, amen. The other two tribes, which was Benjamin and Judah, was a part of the southern tribe, praise God, hallelujah. But Judah inquired of the Lord, amen, hallelujah. And God told Judah, don't touch your brother, amen. And so, beloved, we have to begin to remember, we want to make sure, amen, hallelujah, that our enemy is God's enemy, amen, hallelujah. If you have an enemy that is not God's enemy, then you need to recheck yourself, amen, hallelujah. You need to check out, amen, hallelujah, how you have come to be an enemy with this person, amen, hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus, beloved. We have to be mindful, amen, hallelujah. So you find here that there was mourning, amen, that was extended, amen, to the whole nation because they were fallen by the sword. Not only did King Saul and his son Jonathan die, Amen. The army of the Lord died. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of them were slain. Amen. And David says, as if they was not anointed by God. Amen. It is something special to be anointed by God. When you are anointed by God, the supernatural divine power of God, amen, comes upon you. Praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we know this because there was a time when King Saul was able to, to defeat his enemy, the Philistines, which was also an enemy of God. Amen. Beloved, we want to look into the second part, Lamentations for the Falling. Amen. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. This means that he carried on with crying and grief. Amen. Hallelujah. Great sorrow. Amen. Also, he bade them teach the children of Judah, the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Jasher. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. And so, beloved, amen, hallelujah, it was David, amen. He was a leader, amen. He was already anointed to be king, amen, but he was not king yet, praise God. Some of us, we get one anointed and we just go run, running off, amen, hallelujah. We don't even get all that it is that God has for us. But, beloved, I want you to know that before David became king, amen, 
fully in the in in in, in the um office. Amen. Hallelujah. Before he operated as king. Amen. Even though he was a leader of many prior to being king. Amen. Hallelujah. David was anointed three times. Amen. David was anointed. He was first anointed by Samuel, amen. And then the second time David was anointed is when he became king of Judah, amen, because before he was king over all Israel, he was just the king of Judah, amen. And then the third time David was anointed, he was anointed to be king over all of Israel, amen. And so David, before he walked in the fullness of the anointing that God had given unto him, David was anointed more than once, amen. And these are the things that we have to pay attention to. Just because someone prophesies to you and you get anointed, don't run off, amen, hallelujah, amen, amen. it just amen. Amen. There's some things that God still wants to teach you. Amen. It is for you to come up under the leader. Amen. That he placed you under, that you can learn, that you can grow, even as God is teaching and growing that leader. Amen. Can I get an amen on today? Amen. 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 We still have to learn. We still got to grow. We still got to yes. learn. We still have to submit. Amen. Thank Hallelujah, you, Lord. Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And I tell you that David would have still been serving King Saul if King Saul had not tried to take his life. Amen. So, of course, there is also, amen, there, there is limitations that we could find in Psalms, and then there is the book of limitations, amen, which contains the laments of the prophet. Um, Jeremiah over the fall of Jerusalem, amen? And so, beloved, is this a time of lamentation, amen, for the church? Is this a time that we should be lamenting to move the hand of God, amen? Have many of the church falling in this season, praise God? Have many of our leaders transitioned and gone home? Has many of our loved ones, my God, mm. hallelujah, do we find that there right. is senseless healings, amen? Mm. I just thought that there was amen, a hit, amen, that was taken out on a correction officer, amen, and they um, loaded, I think, 11, 11 in him, amen, and they believed that this right here was a hit, Mm. that this thing was intentional, beloved, amen. Are these things not going on in our community, amen? Is there a lack of value being placed on life? I saw one post that said, if black lives matter, why are black people killing each other, amen? Beloved, listen, it's time Mm. for us to love ourselves and come to love one another, amen? If you don't value your own life, you're not going to value the life of another, praise God, amen. It's time for us to teach our children the ways of the Lord, amen. But if you yourself don't know which season it is, how can you usher those that you're leading into this season that it ought to be, that they ought to be in, amen, the season that God is birthing out? Hallelujah. We have to Mm -hmm. learn to get still before God. King David didn't just run up and and rejoice, amen, hallelujah, at King Saul's death. He didn't say, well, I'm the anointed and it's now it's my turn to be king. No, it did not work like that, amen, hallelujah. There was a time for grief. There was a time for mourning. There was a time of lamenting before the Lord. There was a time to say, God, we honor what it is you have set in place, even if he didn't do the right thing. Amen. Hallelujah. We still honor your choice, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, beloved, which season is this? in your life, amen, for the Bible says, and not just in your life, which season is this in your life, which season is this in your community, which season is this for your family, which season is this, amen, for the United States of America, which season is this internationally, amen, hallelujah, what is the season, praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Beloved, we need the anointing of Issachar, amen, so we would know what to do and when to do it for, for every time, for every season there is a time, praise God. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's Ecclesiastes speaking to us, amen. That's that book, amen. For every season there is a time, amen. Praise God, amen. Seasons birth out amen. timely, amen. God has an appointed time set for every season, praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And beyond the general mourning on the day, David learned of the deaths of Saul and Jonathan. He continued to lament their death, 
This lamentation was not just personal. However, David wanted to be taught to the people, to the children of Judah. Amen. You find that in 2 Samuel 1.18. Amen. The phrase, the use of the bow, could be rendered the code of the bow or the lament of the bow. The contrast draws attention to the Hebrew text, which reads literally, and he said to teach the sons of Judah the bow which makes good sense if the bow is used as a title. Amen. That's what Baldwin said. Amen. Although little is known about it, the book of Jasher, the book of the upright, apparently was a well-known collection of early poetry, commemorating, amen, outstanding events and providing a source book for later and providing, excuse me, a source book for later writers of our Bible book. David's lament was recorded in this book and is quoted here in 2 Samuel. Just because something is quoted in the Bible does not mean the book from which it comes is itself inspired. Amen. And so, beloved, we have to be mindful of that because you will find that Apostle Paul quoted Greek poets, amen, in, in his sermon to Athens. Why? Because this is what those people was used to. They was used to the poetry, amen, of their, of, of their Greek poets. And so he quoted some of those, amen. Someone pull up Acts 17, 22 to 31 and read that for me, amen. Acts 17. Yeah, Acts chapter 17, verses 22 to 31. They did not mean Paul agreed with everything said by these poets. The reference here does not mean the book of Jasher was divinely inspired. Amen. But it was just that portion that he brought out that they can have an understanding. Amen. What does that say, Acts 17, um, chapter 17, verses 22 to 31? What does that say? 22 to 22 to 20. You said 22 to 20. 22 to 31. 31. Okay. Um, then Paul stood in the midst of Mar- of Mars Hill and said, "Ye men of of Athens, Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are to." Su- Two superstitions, for as I passed by and beheld your devotion, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye in more in ignorantly worship him, declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he gave and breadeth and all things, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and have determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation that they should seek the Lord of hap of happily oh if and if they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him and find him through, though he be not far from every one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as certain Mm -hmm. also of your own poets have said. For we are also this offspring. For For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think, that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven Amen. by art and man's device. And Amen. the times of this ignorance God winked at. But now commandeth all men 
everywhere to repent because Amen. he have appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that by that man whom he have ordained whereof he have given assurance unto all men in that he have raised him from the dead. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We thank God Amen. for the reading thank of you, that Lord. word. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And that point Praise is right God. unto Christ. Praise God. And the Apostle Paul was in Greek in Athens. Amen. Amen. Releasing a sermon. And he paid attention, meaning that he observed. Amen. How they worship, what they worship. Amen. And they ha- had to have many altars. Amen. That was set up, but there was one altar that was set up as the unknown God. And Apostle Paul appealed to them in that. Amen. He said, "I see that you are quite superstitious." Amen. Hallelujah. And you will find that the world could be very superstitious. Amen. They get instruction and direction from everywhere. Hallelujah. Throwing salt behind their back, got their pots clapping with smoke. Amen. Hallelujah. They turn around, they go to the seat, the soothsayer, the tarot card leader. Mm. Amen, the tea leaf reader, amen. They're going everywhere trying to get instruction and direction when your own poet says that we live, we move, and we have our very being in God. Amen, hallelujah. Amen. Your very own poets say this ignorantly, amen. amen, and you ignorantly worship a God that you do not amen. know. You have an author that says the unknown God, and he's not far from you, amen. And within that text, amen, the Bible says, hallelujah, that there was a time where God winked at those things, amen. That means that we Mm. were not punishable or punished according to the sins that we did. But it Mm. says no more does he wink. as such a thing, amen, hallelujah. Mm. But now he calls for all men to come unto repentance, beloved. Amen. And so it is time, amen, hallelujah, that we know it's not no, it's not all right that you're in sin, praise God. It's not all right that the world is in sin, amen. That's why God had commissioned us. Amen. Those of us that believe that we can be a witness, amen, preaching this gospel, laying hands on the sick, casting out demons, amen, demonstrating the power of the kingdom of God, that those that hear the preach word will believe, repent, be saved, baptized, amen, hallelujah, and filled with his precious Holy Ghost and fire, beloved, amen. Hallelujah. This is the Thank season you. that we is in, that we are in God yes. with season is it for you. God is no longer winking at the sins of the world. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So let us get back to the text. So David, enemy, the nemesis, amen, King Saul, amen, the wanted to take David's life, amen, he perished, amen, and we learned within the text that God does not want us to rejoice at the calamity of of our enemies, amen, and that David, he is a great example to this. Why? Because when King Saul died, amen, even though he's next for the throne, amen, hallelujah, amen, he lamented, he cried out him and everyone that was with him, not just for Saul and Jonathan, but for all of Israel. So God is telling us to check out our motives. Check out what's motivating you. Check Amen. out what you're doing. Amen. Amen. Everything that we do, we ought to do it for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. If your Amen. enemy is cut down and if God is saying, Amen. do not rejoice at the cutting down or the or the calamity of your enemy, and if you are rejoicing, are you doing it for the glory of God? Every rejoice is not for the glory of God. Every mm. sin is not for the glory wow. of God. Some people want to be seen. They want to be heard. But we got to learn how to do it for his glory. We got to want to breathe for his glory. Rise early in the morning for his glory. Walk and talk for his glory. Eat for his glory. Pray for his glory. Preach for his glory. Be a witness for his glory. Get healed for his glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We have to learn to let everything that we do, we have to check out our motives. Amen. Are we doing it for God's glory? Do we want to be a wife for his glory? What what is the purpose? What is the motivation? Amen. What's pushing you? What's driving you? What is the desire? Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. It's time to do Lord. inventory, mm. beloved. Amen. What's yes. motivating you yes. when people come into your life? You want to know what's motivating them. This is not yes. the time to take yes. Yes. their words mm. and take them because they say I'm a good person and this is what I do. Oh, no, you got to live that thing. Hang exactly. on. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. I'm not yes. going to get in the face of mm. God. I'm going to work yes. I gotta see yes. if you're really a man or Preach woman that. of the world. Hallelujah. I don't even know if you're coming into blessing or the curse. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Now, yes. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Jesus. But I'm going to pay attention to your actions. I'm going to know if yes. you're going to jump ship after a month. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Ooh. Oh, Hallelujah. my gosh. Beloved, we Hallelujah. have to Thank you, God Lord. wants you to stay woke. He wants your eyes open wide. That's a perfect yes, turn. Yes. He wants you discerning. Oh. He wants you trying every spirit, mm. body, and spirit. And then when Amen. God begins to reveal mm. what it really is, when you begin Hallelujah. to see through the eyes of God, that's Ooh. not a reason to be dismayed. That's not a reason to say I found you out and to point your finger. Oh, no, God mm. will instruct you where to place people in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Give people Glory too much too God. soon. Hallelujah. Yes. We give them too much too soon. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. You give them too much access, too much authority too soon. I know that I was in the kingdom, but I was taking authority back. Taking back keys Ooh. to things, taking, just taking stuff back. Because I realized that I gave it up too soon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I realized that. I realized you didn't get to have the authority that I gave you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Mm. You have to see your pearls amongst the swine. Ooh. Beloved, sometimes you have to oh. reassess relationships. You got to do inventory. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ooh. Set new boundaries, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so we're, God. we're in a portion Thank of the scripture. Lord. Hallelujah. Says, amen. Yes, just rejoice in the Lord. Let your rejoicing be in God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let your rejoicing Ooh. be in what it is that he is doing in your Hallelujah. life. Let him truly be your joy. Jesus. Let him be your peace. Ooh. Let everything that you do, let it be for his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes our motives are off. Forget about other people, praise God. It's your yes. motive, right? Yes. What is yes. your motive to give? What is your, what, what is your motive to pray? What is your mm. motive, hallelujah? It's the motive to bring glory to yes. God's yes, name. Lord. Yes, Lord. It's your motive that he be glorified. That's what David wanted today. He, he, he was in grief. He lamented that it may bring glory to God's name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank Hallelujah. You. Hallelujah. Deep sorrow expressed. Mm-hmm. Amen. We're in um, verses 19 through 27, beloved. Amen. Praise God. And the text reads, The beauty of Israel is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath, publish it not in the streets of Ascalon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph, ye mountains of Gilboa. Let there be no dew, neither let there be rain upon you, nor fields of, of offering for there. The shield of the mighty is vilely cast away, the shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil from the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. Amen. They were swifter than eagles. They were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet with other delights, who put ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? O Jonathan, thou wast slain in thine high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful passing the love of a of a woman. Amen. Praise the God. He didn't say a woman, but the love of woman being plural. Praise God. Amen. And so, beloved, Amen. I love this 
sex, amen, because you would think that David would have taken a different approach, amen, concerning amen. the one that tried to take his life, amen, praise God. But I believe that David's mourning and lamentation, amen, he knew that that was the season to do it. He knew that this was the appointed time. He knew that lamenting over one that God had appointed would bring glory to his name. When David speaks about Saul, he I said, is he speaking about the same Saul, amen, that had the javelin in his hand and that threw it at him, the same Saul that said, bring David down, stick in his bed so that I could slay him, the same Saul, my God, hallelujah. It doesn't sound like this Saul, but in death, you find that people do not speak about the bad but the good, amen. They begin to rehearse the good, amen, about the amen. Person, amen, that have, that have um, transitioned, praise God, amen. And amen. we have to be mindful of that because what benefit is it to speak of the bad, amen? What benefit is it to speak of the bad? The word beauty can mean what we usually think of or it can mean something prominent, pleasant, or glorious. Many think the expression is better rendered, the glory of Israel is slain. Amen. The Hebrew word is somewhat ambiguous and has been variously translated in this case, though the reference is to Saul and his army. Amen. And so, beloved, we want to be mindful of that. The high places of Mount Geboa was where the battle actually took place. Amen. And so what he was saying, the beauty of Israel, this means that they were slain here, the mighty of God. Amen. One that God had anointed as king. Amen. They were slain here. The army of God was slain here. So he's lamenting and he's saying, don't let it rain here. Amen. Don't let it bring forth its harvest. Amen. Don't let this place ever be fruitful again. Amen. That this is a memorial that the, that, 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 that the mighty has been slain here. Amen. Praise God. And he's telling the people, don't publish this in the streets. We don't want our enemy rejoicing against us. Mm, my God. We don't want the daughters of the Philistines rejoicing. Amen. Hallelujah. David Amen. is being poetic in his lamentation. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus. Amen, beloved. And so we want to move down to for Israel's warriors. Amen. How he also lamented for Israel's warriors. While we might expect David to extol the battlefield accomplishments of his friend Jonathan, he does so with equal honor concerning Saul. So even though, amen, it was um, Jonathan, the son of um, King Saul, that honored him, he also expressed it for King Saul, amen. Jonathan was really a special type guy, amen. He still honored his father fighting with him in battle as he protected his dear friend, his confidant, David, amen. And you will find because the Bible states that David had loved Jonathan with love, with a love that was more than for women, amen, hallelujah. And I say that because, you know, David loved himself some woman, amen, hallelujah. I didn't say one woman, David loved himself some woman, amen. When David was sick, amen, for Sheba had a young lady that was, that was anointed to heal, amen, lay in the bed with David. And when David did not touch her, when David did not sleep with her, the word went out that the king is dead, amen. That's what the word was, amen. And so Mm. when the word says here that David (laughs) loved her more than woman, listen, this speaks of things to come. David's true love for woman, amen, his desire, amen, for woman, praise God, Amen. And you will find that it didn't mean that him and Jonathan had a homosexual relationship, like some mm. people would like to say. Amen. Homosexuals go through this and say, well, David and Jonathan had a strange relationship, and he loved Jonathan more than he loved women. No, what it says that more than a love for women, for in these times, women were not a confidant to their husbands. Amen. Women played a certain role in marriage. Amen in David's day, amen, but what he had with Jonathan was a confidant. What he had with Jonathan was one that took him over his own father, amen. Jonathan sided with David over his father. What he had with Jonathan was that Jonathan understood 
that David was the next appointed where he took off his armor and gave it to David, amen, to honor the anointing on David's life. Jonathan and David had a special relationship, amen. Hallelujah. Wouldn't it be good to have such a confidant, to have such a friend, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus, a relationship that is so lovely, amen. Praise God. This is why we need, amen, hallelujah, this is why we need revelation, amen, because people will take things and they will make it mean what they want it to mean, amen. They will begin to exhort their own cause, amen, and the Bible isn't saying that the only way that you can get revelation, amen, interpretation of the scriptures is that you need revelation, amen, hallelujah. The scriptures is not for private interpretation, amen. So there was no known homosexual relationship, amen, between, amen, David, amen, and Jonathan, the Bible is saying that their relationship was wonderful, passing the love of woman. Their agenda have gone to the extreme, amen, passing. The, that's not what I wanted to read. I want to read this. While those who have fallen in the battle should be honored for their sacrifice, let us never forget that war, whether ancient or modern, brings death and destruction most often to the innocent and defenseless. Amen. Thankfully, we can look forward to the to that time of peace when Christ comes again, and the nation shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into um, sprung and hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nations, and neither shall they learn war anymore. Amen. Listen, when Jesus comes, it is going to be a time of peace. Amen. Hallelujah. So we ought to fret not. Beloved, before we close out today, and I know it's just about time to close out, I want to give you these quick practical points. Amen? The practical points that I would like for you to remember concerning this lesson, number one is Christians should mourn the passing of loved ones as well as those they had difficulties with. Amen? And so, listen, we should not rejoice, amen, when our enemies see calamity, amen, hallelujah, we need to mourn, we need to know what season it is, amen, um, amen. Number two is it is right to mourn the loss of loved ones and former associates for it shows that we know their value, amen, hallelujah. And so three says we should be sure to honor the mourning of others, amen, we should be sure to honor the mourning of others. And verse number four says, the loss of great leaders, even flawed ones, is hard to bear. Amen. David is that example. And I know today a lot of people are against Trump, but if something was to happen to Trump, amen, during the time of his service, would America glorify God in mourning? for who it is that God has set in place. Amen. Listen, there is no other authority in the earth but the authority of God. Amen. No other authority. No one is getting in office or in position unless he appointed or allows it. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Ain't nobody cheating on the votes that bad. Amen. Listen, if God don't allow it, it's Amen. not happening. Amen. The church, we have to get to that place where we know you have to come to a knowing that there is no other authority but the authority of God. Number five says, it is good to realize the legacy of those we have lost while we mourn their loss. Amen. And six says, when we have lost loved ones, we should not try to bypass the time of mourning. Amen. And so, beloved, it is important to take out time to mourn and to lament and to deal with the grief. Amen, because it's going to come up. Amen. It's going to come up. Amen. And we just want to bless you. I believe that God is speaking to his church, and he is letting us to know the posture that we ought to take even toward our enemies. Amen. And that we have to be mindful, praise God, that all that we do and everything that we do, that we take inventory of our motives, to see if we're really doing it for the glory of God or is there some 
self-serving reason motivating behind the scenes. Amen? And so, beloved, amen, let us check out our own motives, for we cannot control nobody and change nobody but ourselves. Let change start with us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Sister Natasha, I'm going to ask that you close us out in prayer so that we could get into the Sunday service. Yes. Father God, we thank you on today for the word that was passed through Apostle Asia Heard today. Lord God, we take you by your word. We thank you, Father, for the washing of the word on today. Lord God, we just lift everyone up on today, and we're getting ready to go into our service. So, Father God, we bless your holy name. We thank you, we thank you, and we thank you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. Amen, beloved. You are officially dismissed from Sunday school. I'll see you on 1 p.m. Sunday.